What you are going to learn in this tutorial is how to make a transformable mech. You will learn how to take the results of the how to make a dropship tutorial, the results of the how to make a mech tutorial, as well as the results of the how to rig a mech tutorial and combine the results together to make the body of your transformable mech. You will learn how to adjust your mech rig to attach the ship components as well as additional armature bones that will assist in the transformation process. You will learn how to weight paint hard surface objects. You will learn how to animate the transformation process. You will learn how to set up a transformation action constraint. You will learn how to set up an action constraint to be able to quickly and easily control the transformation process. You will learn how to make a custom transform shape that works with the action constraint. This tutorial is taught in a step-by-step -step narrated fashion. As I teach the tutorial, I try to not only explain what I'm doing, but why I'm doing what I'm doing. Thanks for watching this tutorial and I hope that you enjoy it. Hi, this is Ali Arango of Little Guy CGI. Today I'm going to show you how to make a transforming mech inside of Blender 2.83. So let's get started. Okay, to do this uh, tutorial, you're going to have had to have made the uh, assault dropship you see in front of you, as well as the mech that you see in front of you now. Okay, so the plan is is to combine these two meshes together, and that's how we're going to make our transforming mech. So the first thing we're going to want to do is I'm going to go to the assault dropship. I'm going to select this light here. I'm going to go to select, select all by type, select light. Press X to bring up our delete menu, then uh, I deleted those lights. Now I'm going to select B for box select, select all that you see right here. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold control, press C. This copy attributes menu pops up. I'm going to select copy attributes. I'm now going to go to the uh, Blender file that has the mech. So just so you know what's going on, there's two Blender files that I have open. We're now in the uh, Mech Blender file, so I'm going to hold Control and then press V. So now we have uh, the Salt Dropship inside of the uh, Mech file. Okay, with this uh, Salt Dropship in here, what I'm focusing on is uh, this part of the uh, Dropship. So with that, actually before we do that, I'm going to look to this uh, scene collection menu. I'm going to select this arrow. It's a shortcut to uh, make all of these shut at the same time. But I you know, uh, selected the arrow just to make them uh, show less information. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click, select new collection. I'm just okay I see okay <laughs> for a second I was like what what are these pieces here all right those are the pieces of the drop ship so I have these pieces selected I'm gonna actually I'm gonna go to collection I'm gonna name this ship I'm gonna select here Hold shift select here. So I have cube one and you know cube cube dot zero zero two selected. I'm gonna press M and then I'm gonna select this white box that says ship. So uh, now we can select the, the ship more easily when we need to. So with that done, I'm gonna focus on right here, this part right here. Uh, what I mean is we're about to scale this down. 
Okay, so I'm going to press S to scale. And when I say focus on this, I mean I'm looking... I want to have this main piece basically replace this piece here. I'm going to select this piece here. Okay, so there's... Okay, th this is all one piece. Thinking of uh, practicing for this. So what I'm doing is I'm looking to see if this looks like this is a decent size to basically be the main piece right here. I think it needs to be slightly smaller. So when you look at the, the sides of this front piece of the ship from here to here, that is in between the guns, my thoughts are it looks like the guns would have the ability to move. I'm going to press S to scale. Slightly more. So I'm holding the middle mouse button to look around. And I think now that this is looking at this right now, a decent size. This meaning this piece right here. Okay, there are some modifications I want to make to the mech. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to ship. I'm going to select the eye. So that's hidden. I'm going to check the modifiers. We have no modifiers on this mech. I'm going to go with the mech selected. I'm going to go to the upper left to edit mode. Okay, what I want to do here is I want to make the leg wider. So I'm going to hover here, press L, which I'm going to go to the vertex select. I'm going to hold control, press. The, oh, okay. That's, I'm going to press H to hide that. I'm going to select one vertex here. I'm going to hold control, press L. When you select one vertex, when you press control L, you'll select all of the uh, vertices connected to uh, what you currently have selected, which is nice because uh, that allows us to hide things. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting, I just selected this piece right here. I'm going to hold control, press L. I'm going to press H. And what I'm doing is I'm making room so that I can basically select this leg easier. So I select it there. Hold control, press L, I'll press H to uh, hide that geometry. Okay, now we should be able to easily select that leg. So I'm going to go to wireframe. I'm going beneath the mech. I'm going to hold control, hold the right mouse button. I'm using a lasso to select. I went to, up. Oh, I clicked by accident. Holding control as well as the right mouse button allows me to do this lasso select. Dag on it. Uh, see if I can press C for paint select. Good. All right, so I have most of this selected. If you look here, you can see that like not all of this is selected. So I'm going to go to uh, solid view. Then I'm going to hold Control, press L, and then I'm going to press X to bring up our delete menu, and then choose uh, vertices to delete. So I'll press B for box select. Select these. Hold Control. Control, press L, press X, select vertices to delete. Okay, I'm going to press C for paint select, select the area here, these different pieces. I'm going to right click out of paint select, hold control, press L, then press H to hide, select here, hold shift, select here, hold control, press L, press H to hide, press C for paint select, Select this here, right click to get out of paint select, hold control, press L, then press H to hide. Okay, so I'm going to go to wireframe, B for box select, select that, go back to the upper right to solid view. All that because I wanted to make this 
thicker. So I'm going to make this the leg look thicker like that. I'll left click to deselect. I, I didn't, I'm sorry, left click to lock in, left click to deselect now. Hold all. Uh, before I do that, go back to wireframe. I'll select this. Hold control, press L. Go back to solid view. I'll go to the green triangle towards the lower right. I'll go to vertex groups, select plus. Double click, name this leg. Press enter. Then I'll select assign. I'm doing that so I don't have to reselect this. So I'll hold alt, press H to bring back the previously hidden geometry. Left click to deselect. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to this vertex group towards the right, choose select. I want this to be some distance from the center of the, uh, you know, the main line center of the mech. With this selected, I'm going to hold shift, then press D. Right click. I'll pull this duplicate to the side. I'm going to go to mesh, mirror, and then X uh, global. So I mirrored this. So now I'm going to, with this selected, uh, hold control, press L, press X to bring the delete menu, choose vertices to delete. I'm going to go to wireframe, press B for box select, go back to the upper right, go to solid view, then I'm going to move this to the other side, like that, I'll left click to deselect. Okay, we're about to separate this into pieces, that's the plan. Uh, Working with this mech, or if you're working with another mech, I recommend you go to object mode, go to the wrench to check your modifiers, make sure there's not a mirror modifier. If there was a mirror modifier on this mech, it would be better to apply the mirror now while it's on one piece than to have to apply those mirror modifiers while they're in separate pieces. That being said, we're gonna to go to the upper left, back to edit mode. This is the low poly version of the mech that we made in the previous tutorial. Uh, we would have to rebake this as far as uh, animation for animation in the future. So we're going to make this into the into a high uh, poly version of the mech. To do that, we're going to go to the uh, upper left. We're going to go to edge select. We're going to go to select, select sharp edges. We go to the select sharp edges menu. We're going to change this to 70, press enter. We'll then hold control, press E, and then we'll go to uh, edge bevel weight we'll left click that left click to lock that in for this factor we'll change this to one i think that the okay let's see okay yeah so when you put this on you'll see the bevel. I had the bevel turned off from the previous uh, tutorial, so I turned it back on just so you could see, like, these are the bevel lines. This one means that uh, when we put a bevel modifier on here, we can use this to work with the bevel modifier. So now that you see that the bevel modifier is on there, I'm going to select this bevel to take that off again. Okay, when you look at the guns, you can see that they are, you know, low poly looking. Uh, if When I click the, to go to uh, rendered mode, the guns don't look, you know, now they look sharp because they have uh, normal maps on them. So the guns are separate objects. They don't need, you know, what we're planning to do with the rest of this. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put these modifiers on here because it's easier to do this while they're all, all the different pieces form the, the mech right now. 
Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to right click on this mech, select Shade Smooth, it makes it look very strange. We're going to go to our modifier, we're going to uh, select the arrow, or next to the arrow, we're going to go to Bevel, that makes it look better. We're then going to go back to the arrow, we're going to select a Subdivision Surface modifier. Okay, so now that's on there that being the subdivision surface modifier. Okay, so we put the subdivision surface modifier on to make uh, the bevels smooth. One of the issues is, see this right here, see how like this doesn't look smooth. To deal with that, we use the uh, bevel edges that we worked with before. We go to our bevel modifier here. The limit method is set to none. We select weight. So now we can see this looks nice and smooth. Okay, so with that done, as, as far as putting the uh, modifiers on here, when you're working with something like a mech, uh, like it's fairly easy to take these bevel modifiers off and then make a low poly version of this for rigging. Uh, so now that this is these modifiers are on here, when we separate this into its different pieces, each piece will have these uh, modifiers on them, which is what we want for now. So what we're gonna do is go to the upper left, we're gonna go to edit mode. Here in edit mode, we'll go to uh, the, uh, we'll go to face select from the upper left. We'll press A to select everything. And then what we're gonna do is press the P button. Then we'll press separate menu and then we'll select loose parts. So I'll left click to deselect, go to the upper left, then go to object mode. I'll left click to deselect. Okay, it doesn't look like we did anything. However, we uh, uh, all of these parts are separate pieces now. So we're currently in our viewport shading mode. I'm gonna select the arrow to the right. When we look to this color, we see this material color. We're gonna select this to random. So what this does is this makes each separate part have its own color. So we can see that the mech is separated into its different pieces now. So each piece is its, you know, it's, is, uh, basically able to be moved around uh, now, which is what we want. Okay, we're about to go through rearranging these pieces, right? To, to get our transforming mech. Be aware that you can, the same thing that we're about to do as far as making a, a transformer out of these two pieces, you can do the same thing as making just another separate mech or another uh, type of ship. You can arrange these pieces in a similar way to do that. So with that being said, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the left, select the eye to bring our ship back. Okay, so we want to select the ship, select the uh, the wrench so we can see our modifiers. So we have these modifiers on here, which is fine. However, we want to apply this mirror modifier so that we don't have to apply it on each shape because we're about to separate this ship into different pieces, just like we did with the mech. So we're going to select apply for that mirror modifier. Okay, with that done, we're going to go to the upper left, go to edit mode. We're on face select, which we can see in the upper left hand corner. We'll press A to select everything. P to bring up our separate menu, and then we'll select buy loose parts. So now we'll go to the upper left, we'll go to object mode. I'll left click to deselect. Now we can see that our spaceship is also in separate pieces, which is what we want. This tutorial was originally going to be uh, a tutorial about remixing the, uh, the assault dropship as well as the mech, uh, my wife saw me like working around because basically I was like switching pieces out and I was like, oh, look, you can make multiple mechs from this. You can make multiple ships from these pieces. And she was like, oh, you're making a, a, a transforming tutorial. And I was like, wait a second. I've done uh, two other transforming tutorials. I had wanted to do another one. Uh, then when I when she said that, I was like, wait a second, this does look that does work pretty well, you know, together. As far as like why I would listen to, to my mech, like if, if the people who aren't used to this channel, my wife taught me how to use the node editor. Uh, pretty much a lot of times when there's something that I don't know that is particularly complicated, 
uh, I'll say something to my wife about it, and I'll look over. She'll be working on her computer, figuring it out. She just figured out how to use the cloth brush, uh, like I think effectively, which is it, it's its own thing. I'm very excited about. Anyway, uh, that's how this tutorial came about as far as uh, uh, this being like a transforming mech. That being said, you can see just from having these two pieces together right now, you could already imagine this being another version of a mech. So, uh, yeah, you can take these different pieces. You can make multiple mechs, multiple ships. That's, uh, you know, uh, fun to do and uh, just nice to know that uh, you can do that. Okay, so that being said... Let me hold them in the mouse button to uh, rotate. When I select this piece right here, right? See that dot there? When I want to move that piece back, I would select here and then move that all the way back. Now, the reason why this dot, which is the origin point, is so far away from this piece is because that was the origin point for this piece when it was a, a piece of the uh, assault ship, when it was together with the rest of the assault ship. Things will be easier for us to maneuver and uh, work with if each object has its own origin point. So I'm going to select this gun, hold shift, select that gun. With those selected, I'm going to press H to hide those guns since they're already set up. I'm going to go to the uh, wireframe to the upper right. I'm going to press B for box select, select all of these different pieces, go back to solid view. Okay, with all these objects selected, I'm going to go to Object, Set Origin, Origin to Geometry. So now we can see all these uh, orange dots. Those are all origin points. So each origin point is uh, generally where it should be on the object. So now when I select this object, the uh, the Move Manipulator is, is right there. So I want to move all of these pieces together. So they're all separate pieces. So I'm going to go to wireframe, press B for box select, select all these pieces, go back to solid view, and then move these pieces just away. I'm going to go to the hand, to the upper right, to pan, holding the middle mouse button, rotate. I'm going to select here, hold the middle mouse button, rotate back, moving that away. I'm going to select this piece here, move this back here, like that, pull this up some, trying to see what I want to keep that there, I don't think so, so I'll pull this back, hold the mouse to pan okay there's certain pieces that we do want to be together uh, as we're setting this up that will make things easier for us for instance uh, these pieces here so one of the things we can do is we have this uh, 3D cursor right here. So I'm going to hold shift, press A. I am going to go to an empty. What an empty is, it is a non-renderable object. It's very useful for attaching things to. Uh, it doesn't render, you know, normally when you, you render. Uh, so empty is very useful. So we're going to select a cube empty. I'm going to pull that empty up. I'll push this empty forward. So I want all of these pieces here combined, right? I'm looking at this, seeing if this can work. It actually looks like it can. Hmm. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this piece here, hold shift, select there. I'm going to go to this pivot point. 
uh, up here that Blender's default pivot point is the medium point. I'm going to select individual origins. I did this because I want to scale. These aren't mirrored. These are separate objects. I want to scale them now at the same time. So I went to individual origins so they'll scale together at the same time. So I'm pushing them down. I mean, scaling them down, sorry. I'm going to push these forward. I kind of like how this uh, this is along the side. See if I push them forward more. Okay, I'm just thinking here. I think I am going to use that. I actually like that. So what I'm doing here now is I want this piece to be able to fold down some. So the reason why I was looking at that is this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece, these pieces, I want to be able to fold down. I'm thinking about joining these to the empty, which I'm pretty sure I am going to do that. So I'm going to hold shift. So I'm going to select these different pieces here. Okay, with them all selected, I'll hold shift, I'll select the empty last. So with the empty selected last, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control, press P. And then uh, this brings up our set parent to menu. Then I'm going to select object, keep transform. So these are still separate pieces. However, now what I can do is I can select this piece here and I can press R to rotate. And I can rotate this uh I can rotate this down. I also can I should be able to slide this up. Oh, I cannot. Okay. Have the, this is the origin point for the empty. I want this to bend right here. So let's see. I'll go to top view. Hold shift, right click. So we're selected on the empty. I'm going to go to the upper left, go to object, set origin to 3D cursor. I thought it might not work for the empty, and it doesn't. Uh, one of the things I can do, I should have just put the empty there and start it from there. I should be able to press shift, press A, bring in another empty. And if you're like, why are you doing this? It's, it's the quickest way I can think of doing this while making a tutorial. There might be a better way. I'm going to select here, hold shift, select here, hold control, press P. This brings up our set parent to menu. I'll choose object, keep transform. So now I should be able to zoom back, select there, press R to rotate on the X axis. So now, yeah, this is bending how... I want it to bend as far as like working to figure out how we're going to have this transform. Okay, when I say to figure out how to make this transform, what I mean is uh, so it has the appearance like it, it transforms. That being said, uh, in the future, I would like to make a uh, another tutorial that actually shows you how to rig this with armature bones to go through the process of having this go from robot mode into uh, its its flying mode, flying vehicle mode. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button. I'm going to, when I hold the middle mouse button to rotate, I'm going to hold Alt, press A to deselect. I'm going to press C for paint select to select these here. I'll take the move tool to move this back. So 
some of this here. I'll move this back forward. So I want to keep that. However, these pieces here, I'm going to get rid of. I don't want to get rid of that, so let me make sure what I'm doing. So I'm going to hold Alt, press A, press B for box select, select this. Press X to bring up the delete menu, choose a delete to delete. I want these to go. Roll the mouse wheel to zoom in. Holding shift to select the different pieces. I press X to bring up the delete menu, and then choose delete. Roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate. Going to the upper right to the hand to pan. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm taking a look and I'm thinking about uh, how this would look as it changes when I select here. I'm going to press X to bring up the delete menu, choose delete, I'll select here. Press X to bring up the delete menu, then choose delete. Okay, the tutorial you're watching, I actually had stopped working on this tutorial for a while. Uh, recently, I put out a tutorial showing how to rig a mech. I got some nice comments on that tutorial, so I decided to start working on this tutorial again. I also realized that by using that tutorial with this tutorial, uh, having this transformer mech go through the transformation process would be a lot easier to show, teach as well as set up. Okay, the reason why I'm telling you that is when I started this tutorial off originally, I said there was two things you needed. You needed to uh, have made the uh, dropship as well as the mech. So now I'm adding you also will need to continue on this tutorial uh, to have rigged the mech as well. So with that being said, uh, for those people who uh, leave comments, particularly on like the robot or mech tutorials, uh, you guys inspired me from your comments to continue on with this tutorial. So let's continue on with the tutorial. Okay, we're gonna go to the upper right. We're gonna turn on this X-ray. We're gonna select these pieces right here. Press B to do a box select. I'm then going to press X to bring up the delete menu and then uh, left click to delete. I'm going to select the X ray to turn that off. Zoom in here. Okay, this uh, transformer mech is basically a combination of the dropship as well as the mech. This mech is in the position that it was originally made as far as like the legs right here right uh, the rigged mech is in the same position so if you've gone through the mech rigging tutorial you know it's a lot of work setting up that rig we're going to bring in that mech and use those pieces with our drop ship to continue on with this tutorial okay uh, there okay we, before we bring in the other mech which is just a copy of this mech that's already rigged. What we're going to do is go to the outliner, select the uh, arrow. We're going to hide the dropship. We're going to go to the uh, x-ray. We're going to turn that on. We're going to press B for box select. We're going to select all of the pieces of this mech because we're not going to need these because we're bringing a new mech in that already has rig in it, you know, set up, constraints, all that good stuff. We're going to press X to bring up our delete menu and then choose uh, delete. So now with that done, we'll unhide the ship. We'll then turn off the x-ray. So now we're ready to bring in the rigged mech. Okay, there's multiple ways of bringing objects uh, from other Blender files into other Blender files. We're going to use the easiest way of doing that. So I'm going to go to my uh, Blender file that has the... Uh, rig mech in it. I'm going to go to the upper left. I'm going to go to object mode. I'm going to look to where we have custom shapes. I put a, you know, turn the eye on so we can see all the custom shapes. I'm going to select this camera, hold shift, select that light while holding shift. Then I'm going to press X to bring up our delete menu. I'm then going to turn on the x-ray, hover here, press B, select 
of these objects, I am uh, going to hold control, press C. This brings up our copy attributes menu. I'm then going to select copy objects. I'm then going to go down, go to the other blender file. I just hovered over, you know, the blender assemble. It showed me this file. I selected it here. So now in this file, I'm going to hold control, press V. So now we can see all of those objects were just pasted right into here. Uh, what I want to do now is I am going to right click. That's not, sorry, that's not what I want to do. Uh, I want to press the M key to bring up our collection manager. I'm going to select add collection. This uh, new collection here popped up. I'm going to name this uh, rigged transformer. I'm going to press enter. Then I'm going to go to this box and then left click on that box. Okay. So now we should have a new collection. Yes. So we select that. We have all of our different pieces, which is excellent because that should make us easy to uh, maneuver what we need to maneuver around in here. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the outliner. I'm going to hide the ship. I'm going to zoom back. I'm going to select the armature. I'm going to hide the armature. I'm also going to press M to bring up our collection manager. I'm going to select add collection. I'm going to name this custom Oops. shapes. Press enter. So now we have that collection that we can move custom shapes into. Okay, I'm going to go to the outline. I'm going to select this arrow to uh, hide what's inside the uh, collection of rigged the rig transformer. I'm going to turn the eye off for the custom shapes. I'm going to zoom in, take the hand to pan. I'm going to start selecting the custom shapes while holding shift. Up. Okay. It's easier to restart than to keep selecting them. I'm letting go of shift. I'm going to press uh, M then select the box to move the custom shapes in there. I'll select here, press M, select the box, select here, press M. I'm going to select the box. Let's see right here, press M. Select the box here. Press M. Select the box. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate. Okay, we can see here. M. Select the box. Rotating it an easier view to grab. M. I'm going to select the box. I'm going to M. Or select that. Press M. Then select the box. I think that's all of them. Okay, what we're going to do is start to get rid of some of uh, what we previously had gotten rid of. This should go fairly quick, quickly. If you're watching this tutorial and you're like, yeah, I'm not sure if I want to make a transformer. I do think that there are certain things in here that are good to know, even besides having uh, this transform. So I'm going to select here, the main mesh. I'm going to go to the upper left. I'm going to go to edit mode. So I'm going to hover here, press L. Now, because we have seams, uh, actually, me left click of. Oh, okay. Excellent. So I'm going to hover with the vertex. I select the entire object. Where when you have seams, when you select with the face, you select just what's inside the seam, which is good to know. So these are pieces that are currently connected to the rig. Uh, we should be able to just delete these without having an issue. So I'm going to hold control, press L just to make sure we have everything selected. I tend to like to delete on that face select on. 
I'm going to press X to bring up our delete menu and then choose faces to delete. Okay, so I'm going to go to the vertex select. Press L, press L, press L. Then I'm going to press X. Choose faces to delete. That's good. Okay, there's this piece right here. Let's look at this, press L. Faces, press X, delete faces. So we can delete faces right from there, okay. Uh, okay, so one of the things we did was when we worked before we had these legs, we made them thicker, right? So how would you go about making these legs thicker when they have a rig in them? Well, the nice thing is, is uh, you can select, you can, and this is good to know, you can increase the size of rigged objects as long as it's not a drastic size change without really having too much effect on the rig. So we shouldn't have an issue with increasing the size of these legs. So I have L, so I'm selecting the legs. I'm actually going to uh, hold control, right click with the lasso select. I'm going to press and hold control, press L to try to select as much of the leg as possible. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the upper left to where we see options. The upper left, sorry, not upper left, upper right. I'm mistaked. It's upper right where the options are at. See this mirror, we're gonna turn on X, just the X, right? Not here, just the X. So, well, we need this as well. Do we need that as well? Yeah, let's get, grab it. So we'll hold Control, press L. So what we're gonna do is increase the size here. Because of what we did there, that will happen to the other side as the other side as well. So what we're going to do is press S to scale on the X axis, right? And then we're going to put uh, one point two five, and then we're going to press Enter. So actually, because we are, we actually don't. We don't need, we can increase more. I'm thinking like we, I'm thinking that like we uh, need to know the exact size for here, but we actually don't. So let's make this slightly more. So we'll left click to deselect. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to the upper left. We're gonna to go to object mode. We're gonna bring back our ship. So what we need to do is to uh, work out how we want our mech to transform. So we're going to hold a second. what okay so we have this high poly more parts so what do we want to turn back on high poly we gonna leave off okay so we'll turn it armature back on it's the reason if you're like why are you going there instead of you know pressing alt h i want to turn on just what we need i don't want to turn on a whole lot of different objects and then have to go through uh 
turning those objects off. Okay, we had the legs uh, wider before, so I would like to do that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, to, to make them wider. I'm not going to do that in edit mode for the actual uh, mesh. I'm going to uh, select the armature. I'm going to go to actually pose mode. I'm going to go down to, it looks like a little running guy. I'm going to select here. I'm going to hold shift. Now what this is, is this is a layer that we had put bones that we weren't planning to use to animate. So I'm holding shift, I select there. I held shift, I let go of shift because I didn't want to lose this layer. This is the main control layer. So now with this selected, we can see our bones. So uh, what we can do here in pose mode is we can actually select this leg here, right? And then what we can do is actually pull this, oops, we need to, I uh, right clicked, uh, right click is kind of like an undo in Blender. I'm going to hold shift, select here. This controls the main leg. And then I'm going to select here. So with this selected, this selected, as well as that, I'm going to pull this to the side. So that lets me get extra width on the leg. So I should be able to right click, select copy a pose, right click, select paste pose flipped. To have that exact same movement on the other side. So I'll left click to deselect. Okay, to understand a lot of what's going on with this uh the uh the rig, it's I would recommend you watch the uh how to rig a mech tutorial. I'll put a link up so that you can get to that tutorial. Okay, one of the reasons why we did what we did is this these legs took a decent amount of time to rig. They're already rigged. They're ready to go. There's a lot of, uh, you know, somewhat complicated things going on that are already set up, uh, working. That because this was already done, we, you know, have that will make things easier for us. What we need to do is we need to connect our ship to. The rest of the rig so that the ship works with the rig now i mean works with the rig uh like you can see the legs working with the rig okay there's a few things we need to do to the ship i'm going to hold the mouse button to rotate what we're going to do is go to the upper left go to object mode we're going to look to our custom shapes we're going to select this arrow we have the custom shapes off we're going to look to this armature we selected the arrow see this low poly here we have this eye in this uh, low poly section here we're gonna select that we selected that to make our ship easier to uh, to select we're also going to select the eye next to armature so now we can easily work with our ship just holding the mouse button taking a look Okay, we're going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. One of the things we want to do is, actually, these guns aren't apart, so we'll select them, hide them. We need to join this ship together. So we're going to go to our x-ray view. We're going to press B for box select. Select the whole ship. We need to make a part of the ship active. So with that selected, we'll turn our x-ray back off. We'll hold shift and then left click here see how there's like a let go of shift see how there's like a lighter outline here this means this is the active object so you select all the objects then the active object is the object that all the other objects will be connected to so what we're going to do is hold control then press j okay so the ship became one color because the way things are set up each separate object has its own color so this is all one object so now the ship is all one color Okay, this ship, we're going to duplicate this ship. I'm going to hold shift, press D. So I have this duplicate, right? So when I right click to get the duplicate to go back to its original position. So what we're going to do with this duplicate ship is we're going to press, uh, we'll go here. We'll right click in the outliner, select new collection. 
So this collection here, we're going to name this high poly ship, then press enter. So now we'll select this ship, which is our high poly ship. Then we're going to uh, press M. And then we're going to select this box to move the high poly ship into its collection. So then I'll just move to the side. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide that high poly ship. Now the reason why I made that high poly ship and put it to the side is we're going to take off or disable uh, one of the modifiers to make this easier to work with as far as animation. There's a process that I show you how to go through when you're modeling the mech that allows you to take a high, high poly objects then apply their detail to lower poly copies of those high poly objects. So we're not going to do that in this tutorial, but if you, it's nice to have the option. So that's why we copied that ship, moved it to the side and put it out of the way. So if you wanted to do that option later, uh, you can do that. Okay, we're going to look to the wrench, which is our modifiers, our modifier menu. We're going to look, we have a bevel and a subdivision surface modifier. For now, we're going to take off the subdivision. Nope. I'm selected on the high poly ship. So here we go. So now here's the bevel. So now we'll take off the uh, subdivision. So not a huge uh, difference, but there is a difference. Uh, by disabling that, things will work better as far as like the animation. However, uh, like I, I mentioned before, you can use the high poly model to transfer all the full detail to this uh, model. I'll show you how to do that in the, the uh, mech making tutorial. Okay, with that done, what we're going to do is we're going to bring back our armature. We're also going to bring back our... Actually, we do not need to bring back our... Uh, other objects yet so the way that things work as far as parenting uh, mesh to uh, as far as hard surface parenting into uh, an armature is what we need to do is we need to parent things where they have empty groups so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, select the first mesh which we already have selected so I'm going to deselect it so you would first select the mesh hold shift then select the armature then uh, you're going to hold control press P this brings up your set parent to menu then you're going to select armature to form with empty groups so I'll left click to deselect so we just parented well we made empty groups for the the uh, dropship even though we already have groups attached to the uh, the armature. So that's what I meant where I was saying, like, even if you're not interested in doing a transformer, there's things in this tutorial. So it's, it's nice to know that you can parent new objects to your armature, even though it already has objects parented to it. So I'm going to left click to deselect. Okay. What we need to do now is we're going to actually want to arm alter the armature to allow it to do animation so what you want to do is take a look at your your ship think about how you want this to transform when i look at this i want these to be able to move to rotate i want this whole piece to be able to move to rotate i might want this piece here to be able to rotate probably want this piece to be able to rotate so what we're going to do is set up the armature so that the armature will allow us to have the ability to uh to do those movements Okay, so what we want to do is select the armature, go to the upper left, then go into edit mode. So now we're in edit mode for the armature. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to select here. With this selected, this is the uh, tail of the armature. We're going to press uh, E to extrude, right click. Go to this move tool to the upper left and then we're going to pull this piece of armature back right this is a solid piece right here i'm going to want this to most likely rotate down so what i'm probably going to do is give this 
a joint here as well as here. So I'll press E to extrude, right click. I'll have this other piece. Well, actually, I'll go here and press E to extrude, right click, and I'll have this other piece here. So that just gives me some flexibility so I don't have to ro rotate down right from here. I can uh, move this a little. Because this is pushed right against here, it looks like we should have some uh, ability to move this as well. Uh, another thing that's nice about that is we can come right from here and go out from the wings there. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to select here. We're going to press E to extrude and then right click. Then we're going to bring this piece out like this. I want this to be more centered. So what I'm going to do is select here, hold shift, select here, bring that down more like that. My thinking right now is this is probably going to fold up. So this will probably rotate up. So I'm not sure if I'm going to have this move at all. I might just have that be like that. For this right here, what we want to do is we want to give this a name. We'll eventually divide this up. However, giving this a name now, whatever bones we make from this should uh, acquire the name. So we'll select this bone here. We see the name here. This is the left side of the... Uh, the uh, dropship, so we'll name this, uh, we'll name it wing.left and then press enter to lock that in. Okay, we're gonna select here, press E to extrude, right click, we'll push this straight out like this, and I'll press E to extrude, right click, Bring this down like that. So I left click to deselect. Okay, I'm gonna select here. I'm gonna right click, select subdivide. Just wanna give myself extra ability to flex right here. You don't want to make too many bones because you don't want to make things uh, difficult for yourself to animate. If you're like, well, just you know, be careful. I mean, I mean, be careful in not making enough. Just make them all over the place. You don't want to make things uh, difficult to animate. So that's why I'm like looking, thinking like as a, you know where I tend to place uh, joints at. When we select here, if we notice the name, we can see that. Okay, so these are dot L, so I think these should be good. So the reason why the dot L is important, we're going to press C. We're going to select these bones here. And then with these bones selected, we're going to go to the upper left, go to armature, go down to symmetricize. Then these, because these had the dot L in them, these bones were copied to the other side. If these bones did not have dot L in them, they would not have been copied to the other side. I'm going to left click to deselect. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to go to object mode to set up for the bones to move. What we're going to do is first you select the first you select the bone, you hold shift, then you select the mesh. Then you go to the upper left to weight paint mode. Here in weight paint mode, what I'm going to do is hold shift. The shift is very important. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to select the bone. So I, I let go of shift. So I want this bone to control this area right here. So 
So now I'll go to the upper left. I'll go to edit mode. So here in edit mode, what I'm going to do is hover, press L, press L, press L, press L. So this whole area now I have selected. So now I look over to the lower right to the uh, green arrow. See this torso right here? That's the bone that I uh, selected. You can see it right there. So the way things work is think of this this weight here says 1.000. Think of uh, 1 as being 100%. So this section will move 100% with the torsal bone. So what I want to do is select a sign. Okay, after doing that, I should be able to left click to deselect, go to the, I'll go to object mode, I'll select the armature, I'll go to the upper left, I'll go to pose mode, I'll select here, so now I'll press R twice, oops, wrong bone, select R twice, so I can see now I have total control over this bone right here which is what I want, which is good. I'm going to left click to deselect. I'm going to go to the upper left, back to object mode. I'm going to select our mesh. This is going to cause issues. I'm just about positive. So I'm going to go to edit mode, hover here, press L. I'm going to press X to bring up our delete menu, then choose faces to delete. Now I'm going to go back to the upper left, go to object mode, and then left click to deselect. Okay, the reason why I de deleted that bone is typically when you have something transforming, you want to be careful that you don't want to have uh, one hard surface object going through another hard surface object. So I thought that was going to cause issues with that, so that's why I deleted it. Okay, so I'm going to hold the mouse button and rotate the view to set up our rigging process. First we select the armature, we hold shift, then we select the mesh. Then we let go of shift, go to the upper left, then go to weight paint mode. I'm um, here, I can see that the uh, pivot point is set for individual origins. I'm going to set this back to medium point just so that doesn't cause any kind of issues. I'm also going to go to overlays uh, for weight painting. I like for this uh, zero ways to be set to active. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in, use the mouse to pan. I want this bone here, so I'm going to hold shift. Shift is very important. Then I'm going to left click. So with that bone, selected, Oh, you know what? Okay, I'm thinking we made these bones after. Okay, so it should be easy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure some we're going to go to object mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the mesh, uh, hold shift, select our armature, and then what we're going to do is we're going to hold control, press P. This brings up our set parent to menu. And then we're going to select armature to form with empty groups again. So with that set again, now what we're going to do is we're going to select the armature, hold shift. We're going to select our mesh. Then we're going to go to the upper left, then go back to weight paint mode. Okay, I think that color was Blender doing a good job letting me know that there weren't any groups set up to work, you know, for the the uh, rigging process to, to work correctly. So we have that bone selected. What we're going to do is go to the, and now we can see the bone there. So we're going to go to the upper left. We're going to go down to edit mode. So here in edit mode, what we want is... Uh, this section here.
think we have it. I'm going to hold control press L just to make sure. So then what we're going to do is select a sign. So what we'll do now is we'll left click on nothingness to deselect, go to the upper left, go to object mode, we'll select nothingness, we'll select the armature, then we'll go to the upper left to go to pose mode. Okay, here in pose mode, what we'll do is we'll look at that bone. We'll press R to rotate on the X axis. So that bone is uh, working correctly. Okay, good. Okay, we're going to go to the upper left. Go to object mode. We have the armature selected, we'll hold the mouse button, rotate, we'll hold shift, select the mesh, go to the upper left, we'll go to weight paint mode, we'll hold shift, shift is very important, left click here, go to the upper left, go to edit mode, press L, Then we'll select a sign. Okay, we'll go back to weight paint mode. We'll hold shift, let go of shift, go to edit mode. We'll hold alt, press A to deselect everything. We'll press C for paint select, select here, right click, to get out of paint select, so I right clicked, I'm selecting here, here, here. Right click, hold control, press L. Okay, I'll press C for paint select, select here. I rotate it because I want to be careful. I right clicked, uh, rotating to get a good view. I'm going to hold control, press L. So now with that done, I'm going to select sign. Okay, I'm going to hover here, press C for paint select, shrinking the mouse, uh, or yeah, roll, the, <laughs> roll the mouse wheel to shrink my area of influence. I'm going to right click, hold control, press L. I'm going to select assign to assign that as well to the uh, same bone that the rest of the area around there is selected with. Okay, now I'm going to go to the upper left, go back to weight paint mode, zoom in, hold shift, left click here, let go of shift, go to the upper left, go to edit mode. Left click on nothingness to deselect. Press C for paint select. Uh, right click on nothingness to deselect. Hold the middle mouse button, rotate, hold control, press L. And press C for paint so select to select this here. I'm going to hold control, press L. So now I'm going to select a sign. So that should all be assigned, assigned to that bone now. Okay, we're just going to keep going. So I wrote the mouse wheel to zoom back. We're going to go to the upper left. Go to weight paint mode. Hold the middle mouse button to uh, rotate the view. We'll hold shift. 
select here. We can see that that says wing R, so these, even though they look like they're highlighted, this should be the one. We'll go to the uh, upper left, go to edit mode. Here in edit mode, we'll hold Alt, press A to deselect everything, press C for paint select. We'll select here. Well, I'm gonna right click, I'm not sure if I selected that before or not. I'm gonna hold control, press L. I'm then gonna select sign. I'm gonna uh, hold Alt, press A, go to the upper left, go to weight paint mode. I'm going to hold shift, left click here, let go of shift, go to the upper left, go to edit mode. Press C for paint select, select here, here, roll the mouse wheel to shrink, here, 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 I'm going to rotate the view, roll the mouse wheel to zoom out, I'm going to select the hand, I'm going to press uh, C, select here, Yep, and I select it there, so I'll press C, press the middle mouse button to deselect. Then I'll hold Control, press L. I have almost everything. I'll press C. Uh, now I have this. Right click. Hold Control, press L. Rotating the view. So then I'll select a sign. Zooming in, using the hand to pan. And I'm rolling the mouse wheel to zoom back. I'm going to uh, use the hand to pan, zoom in. I'm going to hold Alt, press A to deselect. I'm going to go to the upper left, go to weight paint mode. I'm going to zoom in by rolling the mouse, hold Shift. Select here, let go of shift, go to the upper left, go to edit mode. Then I'm gonna, I'm rotating view by holding, I held the middle mouse button, now I'm selecting this here, right clicking, pressing C to select here, here. Careful. I think I am good. I'm gonna hold uh, control press L. Select the sign. Left click to zoom back. Roll the mouse wheel to zoom in. I'm gonna hold Alt press A to deselect. Okay, I'm gonna go to the upper left, go to object mode, roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. Select the hand to pan, zoom in. Select the armature, roll the mouse wheel to zoom back, go to the upper left, go to pose mode. See what we have, so I'm gonna select here. I'll press R to rotate on the X axis, excellent. Select here. R to rotate on the X axis. Excellent. Select here. Let's be or rotate on the Y axis. Excellent. Here the same thing. Or rotate on the Y axis. Good. Select here. Or rotate on the X axis. Excellent. I will select there. Or rotate on the X axis. Excellent. Okay, with all that working, we're going to go to the upper left, go to object mode, go to our outliner. We are going to turn on both guns as well as low poly. And I'll left click on nothingness to deselect. 
Okay, I'm going to take the hand to pan. So we're going to select our armature. We're going to go to pose mode. Here in pose mode, we're going to select this bottom base. We're going to press H to hide that. Okay, what we're going to do is look to our lower left. We're going to go to King, look to Active King Set, select these keys. We're going to go down to where we see Lock Rot Scale, which stands for Location Rotation Scale. We're going to select that. What we just did is whenever we press I, we're going to enter in a location, a rotation, as well as a scale keyframe for our for each bone that we select or a group of bones that we select. So we have uh, our transformer rig, so this should be fairly easy to transform. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure we're on frame one. We can see we're on frame one here. If we look over to the lower right, we can see we're also on frame one there. So what we're going to do is press A to select everything, and we're going to press I. When we press I, we have this yellow uh, dot that appeared. What that means is that we have a location, rotation, as well as a scale for each of our bones. So for frame one, this is what our transformer will look like. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to frame 200. To move your timeline indicator, that's what this is. You're going to left click as well as drag to frame 200. So here in frame 200, we're going to press I to enter in uh, all the keyframes for there as well. So this is kind of the, the fun part. This is where we get to decide how our transformer is going to move. So what we want to do here is basically set things up so that uh, this looks as, as much as we can like a like a ship. So here what we're going to do is we're going to select here. We're going to press R to rotate on the and not that. We're going to select here, press R to rotate on the X axis. So we'll move these like, like this. We'll select here, hold shift. Move these back like this, up. Try to press or to rotate on the x axis. Or rotate on the x axis like that. Basically, trying to get these straight. Fairly straight. I can select this. There's R to rotate on the x axis more, like that. Select here. Hold shift. Move these up like that. I'll press. A to select everything, then I to enter in another keyframe. Okay, if you are wondering, you're like, they have two keyframes. Why do you keep putting a keyframe in again on the same uh, time on the same frame? And the reason why is when we move this timeline indicator, we're going to change from here between here. Blender will automatically fill in the uh, keyframes for us. However, if we do a movement, if we don't input a keyframe when we go to move, we'll lose the movement that we put in. So that's one of the reasons why I'm uh, doing that. I'll hold shift, select here, I'm going to press S to scale like that. Left click to lock that in, press I.
For this here, I think I'm going to press uh, R to rotate on the Y axis like this, so it's not basically like going into that engine there. Kind of difficult. Let's see where I can push this. So see how I have this up? What I can do is I can right click, copy that pose, right click, and then go to paste X flip but flip pose to have that on the opposite side. Then I can press A to select everything, then press I. So now I have that keyframe locked in. Okay, I'm gonna go uh, down next to the bottom, left click to drag this to frame one. You can kind of already see the uh, transformation kind of like happening there. I'm gonna select here. Then what I'm gonna do is press or rotate on the X axis like this. Then I'm going to press R to rotate on the Y axis. The Z axis, there we go, like that. Press R to rotate on the Y axis like that. So then I want to copy this to the other side. So what I can do is right click, select copy pose, Right click, select Paste X Flip Pose to get that on the other side. Then uh, I'll press A to select everything. It's important that when you put the keyframes in, you have your bones actually selected. Oh, that was an accident. So I'll press A to select all the bones, then press I. If you try to put a keyframe in but a bone isn't selected, you will not have the keyframe in. So I'm going to left click to deselect now. All right, just left click to deselect. Take a look. So you want to, you know, see what you can push to have things uh, you know, be dynamic as they change. So we have these two extreme free keyframes. Then what we can do is the in between the uh, the frames, we can do things to make the change look more dramatic. So something else we can do is we can slide our slide, you know, go back. So it kind of looks already kind of kind of neat to be honest. Uh, we want to see like what else we can do. Like one of the easy things we can do, the more moving parts that you have, the I find that the better things tend to be. So what we'll do is we'll go to frame 50. We'll select here. This is an easy one. We'll press R to rotate on the X. See, this isn't moving high once. I'll press X twice. So now I can have that. When I press X twice, this moves how I want it to move. So I'll left click, right? So uh, now I'll Right click, select copy pose, right click, select piece X, X flip pose, press A to select everything, then press I. So now we have a little extra movement, not moving, you know, with exactly with everything else. So we want to see what else we can do to to push this so something else we can do is like we'll go to that frame one we'll select here we'll press uh, R rotate on the x-axis like this just to tilt that down some we'll press I right so that's locked in the keyframe. Now we'll go right click, we'll select copy pose. So we'll go about to here. We'll right click, we'll select paste the pose. Then we'll press I to put that in. So now we have just another small detail. 
Okay, one of the things we want to look through is clipping, uh, where we have one object going to another. A little is fine, however, however, we don't want it to be excessive. So I'm going to go to the upper right, to the overlay button, so we can take a look at what's going on. So right here, this is going through, and this is pretty easy to, to deal with because... Pretty easy to deal with because we can, uh, we have joints on this. So what we'll do is we'll go before, and when I'm thinking, I'm think basically in my mind, I'm thinking of going from the ship to the robot. So right here, so I'm going to turn this back on. This here, I'm going to hold shift, then select here. Nope, not there. I want this. There we go. So I'm going to press I to put a keyframe in there. Okay, now I'm going to move the timeline indicator. We'll turn the overlays off so we can see this is about to come through. So what we can do here is we'll turn this back on, zoom in, I'm going to select just this one, I'm going to press R to rotate on the Y axis to bring this up. So we want to be careful that we don't go uh, too much, press R to rotate on the y-axis into the ship there to get this movement to the other side we'll right click select copy pose right click select paste x dash flipped pose I'm gonna hold shift I'm selecting here rather I let go of shift and press I I selected just those two bones in case I want to add something else. I just want, this is the only movement going on here, so I figured I'd just keyframe just that instead of the entire uh, Transformer mech. Okay, so we'll turn off the overlay, go back to the ship. So now we can see that getting out of the way. So it starts to move back too soon. So what we can do is we'll turn the overlay back on. We'll right click to copy the pose. We'll move here. It's about cleared there. We'll uh, right click, select paste the pose. And we'll press I to uh, enter in that keyframe. So we're just trying to give enough space for the one object to move out of the way of the object that we you know, currently have the bones selected on. So this object, we're trying to have these stay in to give enough time for that to move back. Okay, we'll go to the overlay again. Take a look. Yeah, so now that's, for the most part, out of the way than that. So that helps. Nice. Okay, when we come here, it'd be nice if the uh, if we had an action of the feet unflexing like right here. So what I'm going to do is go to frame 200, hold the mouse button, rotate the view, turn the overlay on. Let 
This should be the controls here. Hold shift. Select there. So now I'm going to uh, right click, select copy pose, right? Okay, I'm going to go all the way down to here. We'll say like 25, right? So I'm going to right click, select paste pose, then I'll press I to insert the keyframe there. I'll press A to select everything. You go here. I'll right click. I will select paste pose. Press I. Go here. Right click. Select paste pose. Press I. There's other ways to do this. Uh, it's not that many keyframes. That's why I'm doing it this way. Right click. Select Paste pose. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to left click on nothingness to deselect. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. Okay, what we want to do is select everything, right? We don't want the keyframe to be this long. We don't want the, the I mean, the keyframes that make up the animation. We only want the animation to be about a second, maybe slightly longer than a second. So we'll go to frame one, right? We have all of these keyframes selected. So what we can do is we can press S to scale. So we're scaling down. It's 24 frames a second. So I'm going to Slightly more than 24 frames a second. Okay, now with that set up, now we can see how the animation would actually be. About like that. Yeah. So actually, let's let it play out. I'll take off the overlay. I'll select here so the 3D cursor is not even in the way. I think it looks good. Go back. Put the overlay back on. Okay, we need to know exactly which frame this animation ends on. Looks like frame 28 is the end frame. Okay, the reason why we need to know that is we're going to make things, uh, we're going to set things up so we can control this animation with one bone. So we'll go back to frame one. We have our rig selected, so we'll go to edit mode. So what I'm going to do is select here. Just because that's the center bone, I'm going to hold shift, press S. This brings up our snap to menu. I'm going to choose cursor to selected. I'm then going to hold shift, press A. So we have our new bone. Just here. So we'll move this up. Somewhere where we can see it fairly prominently. We'll go over here. Make sure that we know it's not at the form bone. It's going to be, it's going to control the transformation. That's the plan anyway. Okay, while we're here, we're going to name this bone transform. Press enter. Then we're going to go to the upper left, go to pose mode. Here we're going to press A to select all of our bones. Okay, we're going to go, uh, actually we're going to go to the top middle of the screen. We're going to go to animation. We're going to go towards the bottom left of the screen where we see the dope sheet. We're going to left click here. We're going to select action editor. This is the current name, armature action. We're going to select this and change this to transformation and then press enter we're going to click this uh, looks like a shield for fake user then we're going to select this X button to get rid of that animation so you might say well why did you get rid of it well 
with that fake user, we can select here and then we have the animation right back again. So when I select the X button again, then I'm going to go to the upper left to go to the layout, back to layout. Okay, what we're going to do is go to the upper left. We're going to go to edit mode. We're going to select this transform bone. When we look to the right, we can see this is the correct bone that's selected. With that bone selected first, we're going to hold shift and then select this root bone second. I'm letting go of shift. I am uh, going to press control P. This brings up our make parent menu. I'm then going to select keep offset. Then I'm going to left click to deselect. Okay, what you're going to want to do now is go to the upper left, go to pose mode. Okay, I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. It's important that you select these bones here. These four bones. I'm letting go of shift. I was holding shift to select them. Now what I'm going to do is hold alt, then press R. Alt, then press R. There we go. I'm going to left click to deselect them. Uh, these bones here need to be in their this resting position to have the transformation go right. This was causing me an issue as I was uh, uh, working on this before. So what you want to do is left click, actually before that, select on the running man here. This is very important as well. I'm going to actually left click to deselect. I'm going to hold shift to deselect these bones here. I'm going to I let go of shift. So now with only the bones showing that we use for the animation, so only the bones that are on this layer here, this is what this is. This panel here is a layers panel. This is these are the bones that we use for animation on this uh, layer. Right here are the bones that aren't typically used for animation. Uh, I explained that in the mech rigging tutorial. So with only the bone selected that we use for animation, I'm going to select this bone here. I'm going to go to the bone constraint. Uh, here in the bone constraint, I'm going to add an action constraint. With this action constraint where it says to action, I'm going to select the transformation action. For this uh, action range, I want the first keyframe of the animation, which was frame one. The last frame was frame two eight for this uh, from the target, I'm going to set this to Y scale for world space. I, uh, world space works where if, if the entire skeleton moves as well as the bone that this action constraint is on, uh, with world sp space on, the, the transformation would activate. We don't want that. We want this to be local space where on the bone would only activate when that bone is moved. So we're going to select here, select local space. For this minimum, we're going to select or enter in one for the maximum we're going to enter in 0.5 for this target we want to enter in armature for the bone we want to enter in transform the rest of these settings are good Okay, what we want to do is look towards this action constraint. This start is on frame one. End should be frame 28 because that's when the uh, transformation frame ends. What we want to do then is uh, we want to press A to select all of the bones. This transform bone, we want to hold shift. Select this to deselect it. Let go of shift. We then want to hold shift to select this bone to make it, it the active bone. I'm letting go of shift. This is the active bone that has the uh, action constraint on it. We're now going to go to the upper left, go to pose, go down to constraints. Then we're going to go to copy constraints to select bones. I'm going to left click to select that. Then I'm going to left click on nothingness to deselect. Okay, with all that done, I'm going to select this bone right here, our transformation bone. Then I'm going to press S to scale. So you can see that our mech is now transforming, which is excellent. So I'm going to right click to uh, get out of that transform, and then I'm going to left click to deselect. Okay, this entire time we've been looking at the uh, 
viewport shading what we want to do is select the uh what is this this is the viewport yeah the viewport shading before we were looking at the uh solid display if this is the look div anyway uh we have this coloring here from before so what we want to do is we're going to select uh, we need to get our upper left go to object mode we'll select our material or uh, select our object we'll go to the material mode we'll go to the right of the screen go to the arrow and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to select copy material we'll select our the main body of our dropship we'll select the material that you see here and then what we're going to do is select the arrow and then we're going to select paste material okay the reason why this looks uh, like that is what we need to do is we pasted the material that had uh, normal maps here so what we're going to do is go to uh, shading we're going to scroll back we're just going to disconnect some nodes okay, I'm panning up I'll disconnect the nodes here so what I'll do is I'll go to the color base here select the eyedropper and then I'll just select the color a little darker than uh, should be so now we have the basic color for our drops of ship there so I'll left click to deselect okay so we're gonna go back to our layout we're gonna go to uh, the top we'll actually hit me I, I selected the display button I'm gonna select the transform button well select the armature I'll go to the upper left I'll go to pose now I'll select the transform I'm gonna go to the uh, overlay to take a look at this now th this needs some more material work so we're just taking a look at the transformation let's take a look at it here Okay, I think it looks good. We are just about done with this tutorial. I'm going to go to the upper left. I'm going to go to object mode. I'm going to turn back on the overlay. Okay, a few things, a uh, few more things, and the tutorial will be over. We're very close to the end. I wanted to show you how to make a custom shape. So I'm going to left click on nothingness to deselect. In Blender, where the 3D cursor is at, is where objects tend to come into Blender at. I'm going to hold Shift, press A. This brings up our Add To menu. I'm going to go to Mesh, Up To Cube. Here's our cube. With the cube selected on, I'm going to go to the upper left, go to Edit Mode. I'm going to right-click on the cube, select Subdivide. The Subdivide menu pops up over here to the left. We're going to take this smoothness up to 1. We're going to left-click to deselect. We're going to go to the upper left, go to Object Mode select on our armature with the armature selected on we're going to go to the upper left to go to pose mode pose mode is where you enter in custom shapes we're going to go to the lower right to this bone we're going to scroll down we're looking for viewport display we select here this custom object here we already have the bone selected that we want to work with so with that bone selected we'll take the eyedropper then select the custom shape then we'll go back to the lower right. We'll put a check mark next to wireframe. I'm going to left click to deselect. Go to the upper left. Go to object mode. Select this uh, cube. And then I'm going to press the M key to bring up our collection uh, manager menu. I'm going to go to the custom shapes collection. Then select this box to put the custom shape in there. I'm going to left click on nothingness to deselect. Okay, I'm going to go to the upper, oh, we're already in object mode. Okay, I'm going to select on our 
the legs of our mech. I'm going to rotate towards the back. I'm going to go to the upper left, go to edit mode. These pieces here clip through other pieces. I don't think they add that much to the model. So I'm on vertex select. In the upper left, you can select vertex edge or face select. I'm going to hover here, press L, hover here, press L, L, as well as L. With those, uh, that geometry selected, what we can do is press X to bring up our delete menu. I'm then going to choose faces to delete. So now we don't have to have those objects uh, clipping. So I'm going to left click to deselect. Then I'm going to go to the upper left. I'm going to then go to uh, object mode. Then left click to deselect. Okay, there's another issue that I want to address is when we select the armature and then go to the upper left to go to pose mode. Uh, I'm going to hold Alt, then press H. So this is the our base bone, right? So we select here, we press G. We can move our entire transformable mech around. So if I select this bone, then uh, press S to have the mech transform. We can select this, press G to move the transformable mech around. However, if I press or to rotate on the Y axis, you can see that our IKs are making the mech you know, move in you know, ways that aren't the best. I would like to know of a way where I could have a bone uh, work with that. The way I get around it is I go to the upper left. I go to object mode. Here in object mode, what I do is I, I'm going to left click on nothingness to deselect. I'm going to hold shift, press A. I'm going to bring in an empty. I'm going to bring in an empty cube. I'll move this empty cube up. Press S to scale. Then I'll press S to scale on the Y axis like this. I'll press S to scale on the X axis like this. So what I do is I select the main root bone, then I hold shift, select this empty, I'm letting go of shift. So with that done, I'll hold control, press P, this brings up our set parent to menu, and then I'll select object keep transform. So this isn't ideal. I would rather have a bone. However, right now I don't know how to, it's the easiest way I can think of to have your mech basically be able to look like it's flying. I'll go to uh, the overlays to turn that off. So basically with this empty selected, we can move our transformable mech around. We can also press R to rotate on the Y axis to have it, it bank turn like you would expect it to turn. Uh, that's my current solution. So if you guys know of a way I can have this hooked up to a bone where the uh, the IKs won't, you know, there's an easy way to set th set things up where I can rotate the, uh, the ship, uh, let me know. So I'm going to left click to deselect. Okay, guys, that's it for the tutorial. For all of those of you out there who like the videos on this channel and we share them, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And for those of you who are new to this channel, if you like the videos on this channel and you would like to see more, please subscribe and thank you for viewing.